interested, our balanced policy is achieving just that. Question number six, Catherine Delahunty. Oh, tēnā koe, Mr Speaker. Tēnā koutou katoa. To the Minister of Social Development, how will the objectives of the Welfare Working Group protect the needs of New Zealand's most vulnerable citizens? Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, the terms of reference have been carefully developed to tackle the really hard issues of long-term dependency, and I think that does help our most vulnerable, our children. Catherine Mr. Delahunty. Speaker. Is it an objective of the Welfare Working Group to promote the idea that there is a link between, quote, low average intelligence and low class position, unquote? And if not, why has she appointed Peter Saunders, who espouses this view, as an advisor to the group? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, he is one of many advisers that are coming in internationally and both domestically as well, that have a whole range of views that will be talking to the Welfare Working Group. Um, I hadn't heard those ones previously, so it was only one of many. Uh, supplementary, Carmel Cipollone. Does she believe the availability of the DPB makes single parenthood attractive and a lifestyle choice, as Peter Saunders, one of her social welfare working group advisers, has claimed? And was that the reason why she availed herself of the benefit system in New Zealand? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, personal insults aside, um, I think that Peter Saunders is one of many advisers. He has something to offer the group as far as that international knowledge. Um, you could read his book, Welfare to Work, that he wrote in Australia. Uh, I don't agree with everything he said. I don't agree with everything that a number of the advisers to the group, but what we are is open to listening to those views via the Welfare Working Group and hearing what they are. Catherine Delahunty. Uh, supplementary to the Minister. Is it an objective of the Welfare Working Group to promote a, quote, competitive market for sickness, invalid and unemployment insurance, unquote? And if not, why has she appointed Catherine Isaac to the group, who endorsed this policy as former president of the ACT Party? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, there are a range of views on the Welfare Working Group, a range of advisers that are coming in and talking to them. We're actually um, holding a conference which will have a number of other people involved as well, including Susan St John, who was invited to actually be on the Welfare Working Group, but instead has decided that she would like to be involved um, the same way she was with the Tax Welfare Working Group. We've got disability groups that would like to be. There is a range of views, none of which we're actually uh, jumping onto sides with. Catherine Delahunty. Minister, is it an objective of the Welfare Working Group to use the welfare system to benefit private interests? And if not, why has she appointed Adrian Roberts, who is a contractor, to work an in income to the group? The Honourable Paula Bennett. <laughs> Mr Speaker, I think he's got a, another view and another areas of interest that he brings to the table and there is a range of views that are there that are coming from different directions. Well actually there are a range of views. We've got some that are with Māori organisations that have been working with those that are welfare dependent for long periods of time and have been making significant differences in getting them off. We also have uh, some others that have done them. So there's a number of different uh, initiatives and I think they're good with them worth listening to. Order, before I ask Catherine Delahunty to ask a further summary, could I ask uh, members please to keep the interjections down to a reasonable level? I can't hear the, uh, the Minister's answers and it's important I do hear them. Catherine Delahunty. Order. <laughs> Supplementary Catherine to Delahunty. the Minister. Does she consider that people with disabilities to be among our most vulnerable citizens? And if so, why has she not appointed anyone with an actual disability to the group as opposed to just representing the care sector? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, uh, one of the academics on the group has a strong interest in disability issues and she is actually presenting that and also those from the sector will have an opportunity uh, to actually be um, advising the group as well. Catherine Delahunty. Given these appointments, did she really have New Zealand's most vulnerable citizens in mind when she chose the members and advisers of the Welfare Working Group? Honourable Mr Bennett. Speaker, um, every bit of evidence tells you that children that grow up in a, in a household that is not dependent on welfare do better, and it's them that I have in mind, and this party does, when we look at what we can do for them longer term. Catherine Delahunty. Entry, Mr Speaker, how can vulnerable New Zealanders possibly be best served 
by a group whose advisors and members think that they are inherently less intelligent, lower class, lifestyle beneficiaries whose painful personal situations are an opportunity for private profit. The Mr Quality. Speaker, what, you, what the member is doing is taking a quote from one advisor, one of many that is coming to the welfare group. Some of the, that I don't agree with, I say agree with some, don't agree with other points of view that are put forward. But Mr Speaker, those, those very members of those that are dependent on welfare have been ignored for 10 years, had money thrown at them, have seen welfare numbers actually increasing. Those vulnerable members that actually the member you know, raises are actually worse off now than they were sort of 10 years ago. We're going to address the complex issues and I make no apologies for that.